that the surface temperature of Venus is 900 degrees height. That's hotter than a Ooh. baker's oven. Lead would be molten at that temperature. And when it rains, it rains sulfuric acid. And Ugh. the pressure of the air is 100 times that of the Earth. It would crush you. Deep within the vast expanse of our solar system, a planet veiled in mystery and intrigue has captured the imagination of scientists and explorers for centuries. Venus, our celestial neighbor, shrouded in a thick atmosphere of mystery, has long hidden its secrets from the prying eyes of humanity. Throughout the space age, the Soviet Union emerged as a fierce competitor in the race to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. So, in a covert operation that remained hidden for decades, the Soviets set their sights on unraveling the enigma of Venus, sending their intrepid probes on a daring mission into the unknown. But it wasn't until now that the renowned physicist and futurist, Dr. Michio Kaku, sent a shockwave through the scientific community, revealing never-before-seen and declassified photographs from the Soviet era and offering a glimpse into the forbidden world of Venus. Could Venus, the so-called hellish planet, not be as inhospitable as we once believed? And what if these photographs contain hidden evidence of an ancient, thriving civilization that once called Venus home? Prepare to have your understanding of our universe challenged as we uncover these breathtaking declassified photos from Venus by the Soviet Union. Decades ago, during the Cold War period following World War II and extending into the 1980s, an important event called the Space Race took place. This race occurred between the United States and the Soviet Union, who were both powerful countries competing to demonstrate their superiority not only in military and politics, but also in technology and science. Space exploration became a significant battleground for this rivalry, leading to groundbreaking advancements in space technology. The space race was not just about exploring space, but also served as a symbolic stage for these nations to showcase their technological capabilities to the world. The Soviet Union, in particular, was eager to display its achievements in this area. A pivotal moment occurred in 1957 when the Soviet Union successfully launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite. This event was revolutionary and marked the beginning of a new era in space exploration. As Sputnik orbited the Earth, emitting its distinct beeping signal, it had a tremendous impact. It represented the start of a race, not only toward the stars, but also for international prestige and recognition. Why was Venus the main focus at that time? Well, Venus is our closest neighbor in the solar system and shares similarities with Earth in terms of size and composition. It has often been referred to as Earth's sister planet. However, Despite these similarities, there are significant differences between the two. This raised the important question of how much Venus resembled Earth and whether it could potentially serve as a second home for humanity in space. These questions captivated the interest of scientists and the general public, leading the Soviet Union to take on the task of finding answers. Thus began the era of Venera missions, a series of spacecraft launched by the Soviet Union specifically designed to explore Venus. The primary goal of these missions was to gain a deeper understanding of Venus's atmosphere, surface, and overall conditions. In his book, Michio Kaku mentions the significant contribution made by the Soviet Union's Venera probes, which were the first and only spacecraft to capture images from the surface of another planet. To further emphasize the significance of this topic, it is worth noting that numerous missions targeted Venus during this period. However, Exploring Venus is a challenging task. The conditions there are incredibly harsh, with scorching temperatures capable of melting lead, dense clouds filled with sulfuric acid, and atmospheric pressure so extreme that it could crush a human being. Nevertheless, the Soviet Union remained undeterred and was determined to confront these challenges head-on. The first important mission of Endeavour was called Venera 1. It was launched in 1961, but didn't go as planned. Instead of reaching Venus, it passed by at a far distance of 62,000 miles. The Soviet Union didn't give up and launched Venera 2 the next year. Unfortunately, it also failed to reach Venus, but they didn't lose hope and launched Venera 3 in 1965. 
This time, they succeeded. Venera 3 crash-landed on Venus but sent back valuable data for a few minutes before being affected by the harsh conditions. This experience changed how the Soviet Union approached space missions. They realized they needed better spacecraft to get important data from Venus, so they redesigned the spacecraft, making it stronger. Each spacecraft had a detachable pod called a descent module with advanced tools like a barometer, radar altimeter, gas analyzers, and thermometers. The goal was to gather as much data as possible during the short time the module could survive on Venus's surface. Now, let's address the intriguing part of the question. What did the Soviets discover on Venus that they kept hidden? To answer that, we may need to examine more historical data, including records from subsequent Venera missions and declassified Soviet space program documents. It's important to note that the Venera missions didn't end with Venera 3. The Soviet Union continued with the next mission, Venera 4, which was a game changer. This spacecraft successfully landed on Venus's surface, and it uncovered significant discoveries that were highly noteworthy. Venera 4 made a fascinating discovery about Venus's atmosphere. It revealed that the atmosphere of Venus is packed with carbon dioxide, which is a type of gas that traps heat. This high concentration of carbon dioxide explains why Venus has extremely hot surface temperatures, reaching up to 864 degrees Fahrenheit. To put it in perspective, Venus is even hotter than the closest planet to the Sun, Mercury. This finding helped us understand the climate and geology of Venus. In addition, since Earth and Venus share similarities, it also provided us with a glimpse into a potential future for our planet if greenhouse gases continue to accumulate in our atmosphere. Venus serves as a strong warning for Earth, highlighting the devastating effects of greenhouse gas accumulation. In addition to the carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere, Venera 4 also discovered that Venus does not have a global magnetic field like Earth does. According to Michio Kaku, our magnetic field shields us from harmful solar winds and radiation, which are essential for supporting life as we know it. The absence of a similar magnetic field on Venus suggests that life, at least as we understand it, may not be possible there. This finding was a significant breakthrough in our understanding of how planetary magnetic fields form and evolve. It also contributed to our knowledge about the habitability of other planets in our solar system and beyond. With each mission, and every piece of data gathered, we moved closer to comprehending not just Venus, but also our own planet, and the vast universe around us. The Venus missions were amazing trips that helped us learn more about space. Unfortunately, Venera 4's mission ended quickly because of Venus's tough conditions. It collected data for only 90 minutes before it stopped working. But those 90 minutes gave us important information about the planet. After Venera 4, two more probes, Venera 5 and Venera 6, were sent to Venus in 1969. They were designed to be stronger than Venera 4 and had advanced instruments to collect more precise data. Venera 5 was launched on January 5, 1969. It went into Venus's atmosphere and sent back data for 53 minutes while descending with a parachute. It measured things like the atmosphere's chemicals, oxygen and hydrogen levels, density and temperature. Venera 6 was launched just five days later, on January 10, 1969. It also had instruments to study cosmic particles, measure oxygen and hydrogen levels, atmospheric pressure, chemical composition, density, and temperature. It successfully went into Venus's atmosphere on May 17, 1969, and sent data back for 51 minutes. Its photometer didn't work, but it provided valuable information about the atmosphere at different pressures. Both Venera 5 and Venera 6 had smaller parachutes to handle Venus's thick atmosphere and reach maximum depth. The information gathered from these missions supports the findings of Venera 4, which confirmed the high temperatures, pressures, and carbon dioxide composition of Venus's atmosphere. This made it evident that Venus was not a suitable environment for life as we know it. Then came Venera 7 and Venera 8, which were part of the Venera series of probes designed to explore Venus. They provided us with crucial data here on Earth. Venera 7, launched in August 1970, was a significant milestone. It became the first spacecraft to successfully land softly on another planet and transmit data back to Earth. The probe was specifically built to endure the extreme conditions on Venus, 
including high pressure and temperature. It carried various sensors to measure temperature, pressure, and atmospheric density, along with an accelerometer and a radar altimeter. The journey to Venus took some time, and course corrections were made during the flight using the onboard engine. When it reached Venus in December of the same year, it had to enter the Venusian atmosphere. The entry was challenging. Initially, the lander remained attached to the bus to stay cool for as long as possible. After being ejected, the parachute opened but started to fail, resulting in a faster descent than planned. As a result, the lander hit the surface at a speed of approximately 59 kilometers per hour. At first glance, one might assume this was a mission failure. However, despite going silent upon impact, the recording tapes kept running. A few weeks later, an additional 23 minutes of very weak signals were discovered on the tapes. This meant that Venera 7 had indeed landed on Venus, even though it had bounced onto its side and misaligned the antenna for proper signal transmission to Earth. During its brief time on the surface, the probe managed to send back data for about 20 minutes. It recorded a surface temperature of around 887 degrees Fahrenheit, an estimated pressure of about 1300 PSI. Moving on to Venera 8, which was launched in 1972, it was a similar mission but had some key differences. The probe was also designed to study Venus's atmosphere and surface, but the landing went more smoothly this time. Venera 8 was equipped with temperature, pressure, and light sensors, an altimeter, a gamma-ray spectrometer, a gas analyzer, and radio transmitters. The journey to Venus took about 118 days, with a mid-course correction made along the way. The descent capsule was pre-chilled before entering the atmosphere to prolong its lifespan on the surface. The use of aerobraking helped reduce the descent speed from around 41,696 km per hour to about 900 km per hour. The parachute opened at an altitude of 60 km. During the descent, Venera 8 transmitted data noting a decrease in illumination at 35 to 30 km altitude and wind speeds of less than 1 meter per second below 10 km. The lander touched down in what is now known as Vasilisa Reggio, about 500 kilometers from the morning terminator. Venera 8 sent data for 50 minutes after landing. It confirmed the high temperature and pressure on Venus and measured the light level suitable for taking photos. The light was like a cloudy day on Earth with about one kilometer of visibility. The probe found that the clouds on Venus end at a high altitude and the atmosphere is clear down to the surface. The gamma-ray spectrometer on board measured uranium, thorium, and potassium in the rocks, which were similar to alkali basalt. Venera 7 and Venera 8 missions made important discoveries about Venus, despite the challenges. Despite a less-than-perfect landing by Venera 7, the Soviets didn't give up. They learned from their mistakes and improved future missions. Thanks to Venera 8's data, Scientists found that Venus has 90 times the atmospheric pressure of Earth at sea level. The probe's sensor worked well under this extreme pressure. It also recorded light levels on Venus, suggesting the use of cameras to capture images from the planet's surface. Mikio Kaku believes that the Soviets wanted more than just landing on Venus. They wanted to see what the planet actually looked like. This paved the way for future missions. From Venera 9 to Venera 12, the mission took an exciting turn. These probes were equipped with cameras that could capture images of Venus, giving humanity its first glimpses of the planet's rugged and rocky terrain. The initial images were not perfect, but they revealed a harsh and inhospitable landscape with impact craters, steep cliffs, and vast plains covered in ancient lava. In 1981, Venera 13 and 14 continued the mission with more advanced capabilities, these probes had landers with high-tech acoustic equipment that could measure the speed of winds on Venus's surface. However, the real game-changers were Venera 15 and 16. Instead of landers, these spacecraft were equipped with robust radar-based imaging devices. They mapped the surface of Venus from an eccentric orbit, providing detailed snapshots with a resolution of about one mile per pixel. These images revealed the true nature of Venus's topography. Each new mission was like turning a new page in a book, unveiling more fascinating information about Venus. Not all missions were flawlessly successful, though. 
Many cameras on these probes failed due to the harsh conditions. However, a few persevered and successfully captured and transmitted the first ever photographs from the surface of Venus, our solar system's second planet. Despite thorough exploration, the Venera probes did not find any signs of life on Venus. There were no oceans, lakes, or even a single droplet of water on this desolate world. However, the investigations conducted by these probes provided invaluable insights into the extreme environments of alien planets, enriching our understanding of how different these celestial bodies can be compared to our own Earth. According to Kaku, the fact that there is no life can be disappointing, but the probes have brought us interesting and captivating findings. For example, Venera 13 accomplished a remarkable achievement by recording the strange sounds of Venus's winds. This was the first time any sound had been captured on a planet other than Earth, making it a memorable moment in our journey of space exploration. Despite the challenges and setbacks, the legacy of the Venera probes continues to inspire new endeavors in understanding our celestial neighbors. However, Venera 13's accomplishments went beyond capturing alien sounds. Originally designed to operate for only 45 minutes, the lander surpassed expectations and worked for an impressive 127 minutes on Venus's hostile surface. During this extended operational period, it managed to capture and transmit stunning color photographs of the planet, revealing a stark and desolate terrain, unlike anything we had seen before. But the surprises didn't end there. Venera 13 also dug into the Venusian soil, analyzing a sample. This marked the first time humanity had analyzed the composition of another planet's soil. Through this exploration, we discovered the presence of elements like titanium and iron on Venus. It's truly amazing that we could gain such deep insights about a planet located over 100 million kilometers away from us, especially considering that this groundbreaking work took place in 1980s. However, as we learned more about Venus, it became clear that it's highly unlikely to support life as we know it. Venus's atmosphere is nearly 100 times denser than Earth's, and its surface is subjected to infernal temperatures. Far from being a tranquil, tropical paradise, Venus presents a daunting picture with its backward rotation and the absence of oceans or bodies of water, similar to those on our blue planet. Despite these inhospitable conditions, our exploration of Venus is far from over. Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, is currently developing a new mission to Venus called Venera D, set to launch in 2029. This ambitious mission will consist of an orbiter and a lander, and will serve as a model for future Venus explorations. You might wonder why we're planning further explorations despite Venus's hostile environment and apparent inability to support life. The answer is intriguing. It appears that not all information discovered during the initial missions to Venus was fully disclosed. There is more to uncover about this fiery planet, and this mystery is driving the need for further exploration. In the fall of 2020, scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology made a surprising announcement. They had detected phosphine gas in Venus's atmosphere. This discovery is significant because phosphine gas could potentially indicate the presence of life. Adding to the intrigue, there might be additional evidence supporting this claim hidden in the data archives of a NASA mission from over 40 years ago. The mission in question was the Pioneer Venus Multiprobe mission conducted in December 1978. During this mission, four probes were released into Venus's atmosphere, one of which was larger and equipped with an advanced instrument called the Large Probe Neutral Mass Spectrometer LNS. The LNMS was primarily used to identify known molecules in the atmosphere, such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and argon. The LNMS may have detected other molecules like phosphine. Professor Rakesh Mogul and his team reanalyzed the LNMS data and found evidence of phosphine. This makes the research on Venus more interesting. Mogul suggests that the scientists missed the detection of phosphine because they were focused on studying Venus's atmosphere and well-known elements. Another theory is that they kept the information secret to gain an advantage over other countries. However, there's a crucial detail. If Mogul's interpretation of the Pioneer mission data is correct, it could support the recent phosphine detection by the MIT team. 
But not everyone in the scientific community believes the LNMS was sensitive enough to detect phosphine. Mikhail Zolotov, a scientist studying planets at Arizona State University, suggests a different viewpoint. He proposes that the LNMS might not have detected phosphine on Venus, but a mixture of gases containing phosphorus and hydrogen sulfide instead. If the LNMS did detect phosphine, it could mean that there is a much larger amount of the gas than what the MIT team initially found. This difference raises concerns among the scientific community. Unfortunately, we currently don't have access to the Pioneer Venus multiprobe mission data, as it is stored on microfilm at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and is restricted. Dr. David Williams, the acting head of the NASA Space Science Data Coordinated Archive, says they are working on obtaining permission to convert the microfilm into a digital format. This would allow for a thorough examination of the data without handling the original physical records. Researchers such as Michio Kaku are filled with enthusiasm by the discovery of phosphine gas on Venus, as it suggests the possibility of life existing on the planet. But we need to be careful and not jump to conclusions. To be sure, we need more information. We could send probes to Venus or study data from previous missions to gather more evidence. It's important to confirm the presence of phosphine and determine if it comes from living organisms. Validating these findings is crucial before making big claims. Scientists will keep exploring Venus and studying its data to verify the presence of phosphine and look for other signs of life. If they succeed, it could change our understanding of the universe and our search for life beyond Earth. Do you think people will be able to live on Venus in the future? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.